Hello everyone, Sir Wayne Sandwich here with another ARMA 3 tutorial. In this video we'll be going over the radio support module that comes with the SOG Prairie Fire CDLC. You can use this module to add some interesting and engaging support modules, um, both uh, air support and fire support to your missions for your players. It's fairly simple to use, uh, so we'll just go ahead and get into it. First thing we want to do is we want to find our radio support module. It's under SOG CDLC modules. We'll go ahead and drop that into our mission. Now, in order to enable uh, radio support for all your players, uh, all you have to do is place this into the mission somewhere. Um, this is really great for maybe when you have a single player mission and you just need to give access, or maybe you want all of your players in a mission to be able to access radio support. The location uh, seems to matter for the time that artillery fire support takes to arrive, uh, but doesn't seem to affect the time that air support takes to arrive, presumably because your air support would be loitering on station. Uh, waiting for a support request. So like I said, if you want everybody to have access, all you have to do is drop it into the mission. Uh, and let's go ahead and test that. All right, so you can see in our action menu, we now have the option for radio support. If we open that up, we get this nice little dialogue. Um, it has a radio and a map uh, where we can adjust the, um, the different fire support options. If we click this left knob here, we can cycle between air support and artillery fire support. And then the options are available to us down here in this menu. Uh, and this allows us to click on the map and confirm uh, where our fire support is going to land. Now, if you want to do something maybe a little bit more interesting and restrict your fire support to certain players, that's fairly easy to do, although it does require a little bit of configuration outside of the editor. So let's go ahead and do that now. First thing that we're going to make sure we do is that we're going to save our mission. And then we're going to go to our desktop. And we're going to locate the folder that the mission is saved in. Again, typically under Documents, other ARMA3 Other Profiles, your profile name, missions, uh, and then your mission name. Uh, you can see we've already created a file description.ext. So we'll go ahead and open that. Uh, this is where we'll be pasting our configuration file. The default configuration is available on wiki.sogpf.com. If you go to the radio support article, there is a default CDLC config, which we can open up here. This has all of the default artillery settings uh, that are set for, um, for the radio support module. We're going to go ahead and copy everything here and paste that into our description.ext. Now, there are a couple of things that we're going to go over in this. Um, the mainly the uh, configurable settings are up here. Uh, you can do some configuration of the individual classes to adjust what fire supports are enabled. Uh, for instance, if you want to get rid of uh, like the napalm uh, bombing run, you can delete this class sundowner here and it won't appear in the menu. But the main ways we can configure uh, are up in these uh, artillery settings here. There's a cost variable, which allows you to set uh, a variable to track the cost uh, or to track the, uh, the points available for calling artillery. You can see that each individual artillery uh, or air support uh, option has a cost associated with it. So if you set a cost variable and then modify that variable throughout your mission, you can limit the amount of artillery that is available for the uh, players to call. Now we have the, uh, very, uh, the uh, availability array here, uh, which allows us to set who can access fire support. By default, it, the first option is set to one, which sets it to always available. The rest of the options in order are radio backpacks, radio vehicles, player types, and um, the VN artillery unit trait. So uh, radio backpacks include all the, the default radio backpacks in the game. Um, the uh, radio vehicles include some of the unarmed trucks uh, and jeeps uh, that are included in the CDLC. Uh, player types include things like RTOs, um, you know, various soldiers that, that would typically uh, carry a radio. Uh, and then this final setting allows us to set uh, a unit trait and make fire support available to those units. We'll go over that in a moment. 
The danger distance just sets the distance from the edge of a blacklisted marker, uh, those being the respawn markers that uh, artillery and aircraft cannot be called in. So uh, this is to help uh, make sure your, your buddies aren't getting friendly fired on top of a respawn by artillery. Uh, and then the unit trait required uh, is slightly different from the availability uh, unit trait number here. Unit trait required uh, stacks with availability. So for instance, if, if I had, um, if I change this here, we'll set it to uh, radio backpacks, radio vehicles, um, and our uh, VN artillery unit trait. So now what this would do is it would allow all players with radio backpacks or in radio vehicles or players with the VN artillery unit trait. Now, if you want to restrict this even further, what you can do, set this to zero again and set unit trait required to one so that uh, instead of um, giving access to all units with the VN artillery unit trait, it will require backpacks or vehicles and it will require the unit to have that trait as well. So that's how you can kind of restrict things uh, to your players. All right, let's go ahead and save this and then uh, we'll test it in the editor. All right, so one thing that we have to make sure we do is uh, make sure that we have a radio backpack that is actually in the radio backpack array. If we look here under this unit's backpack, we can see that it's the SOG CISO RTO slash XM177 backpack. Now this is the default backpack that comes with this uh, Mac VSOG uh, RTO. It's configured to have ammunition and grenades for the XM177. However, uh, this backpack is not included in that array. So if you want your units to be able to access the fire support options by using a backpack, you have to switch this to one of the backpacks that's in the array or add the backpack that they're wearing to the array. So we're just gonna go ahead and switch this to the CISO RTO backpack, click okay. And now we'll go ahead and test it in the mission. Uh, the other thing that I've done is added the trait to this RTO. If we open up his settings, we can see in the init line, I have added this set unit trait and then open bracket VN artillery, which is the trait that's required, comma true, comma true, close bracket, semicolon. Don't forget your semicolons, your code doesn't work without them. Now the true, the first true is setting the trait for this unit to true, and the second true is required because this, uh, this unit trait is a custom unit trait. If you were doing something like setting the unit trait to uh, medic or engineer, you wouldn't require that second true because those are in the, the default ARMA 3 unit traits, but because this one is added by the SOG Prairie Fire DLC, um, you have to add that second true as it's technically a custom trait. All right, so let's go ahead and launch the mission and we'll see um, how this affects things. All right, so you can see that I have the radio support option in my action menu right now, but if I go ahead and drop my pack, now I no longer have access to radio support because I'm not carrying an RTO backpack. Now, if we switch to the scout here, we can see that we don't have access to the, um, to the radio support option because we're not carrying a backpack, but this scout also does not have the unit trait set. So even if I pick up this backpack, I still don't get the option to select radio support, uh, even though I have a radio backpack equipped. So that's one of the ways that you can limit um, who has access to the radio supports. You can use either the backpacks and vehicles, uh, or you can just set that trait for anybody who you want to have the uh, access to the uh, artillery. Or if you use trait required, instead of using the trait in the avail availability array, you can make it so that um, the trait and the item are both required for access to the RTO role. All 
All right, so there you have it. That's how you can configure um, your radio support module. Um, I'd encourage you to play around with it and see what you see what else you can do with that menu and see if you can add custom vehicles, things like that. Um, but that's a little bit beyond the scope of the, this tutorial. Uh, so as usual, I hope this is helpful to everybody and enjoy.